I am here with my sister Sylvia. She's about to reveal to you everything she knows of what I was like before my transition. Hi, I'm Melody Maya, and I talk about everything in my transgender lesbian life that you would really like to know about but are afraid to ask because greater understanding makes the world a better place for all of us. You might recognize Sylvia from my last video that I made when I was here in New York City, which was the vlog for New York City Pride, the 50th anniversary of Which I love is love. I didn't even realize that I grabbed the shirt, so I Yay! think it's appropriate. Sylvia is a few years younger than me. In fact, her birthday is next week. Oh, Virgo. I'll be 42. Yay! 42 years young. We are not ashamed of our age. Nope. I wear like a badge I, of honor. I can't wait till I'm 50. Really? Because then I can walk around and be like, yeah, I'm 50. And then people can <laughs> be like, what? <laughs> Happy birthday, Sylvia. What are your memories of me like growing up? I do remember Maya being very quiet, um, kind of to herself, very reserved, just kind of very studious, introvert. I remember playing around with her sometimes. She was never really like evolved or around us a lot. I spent a lot of time in my room. And being the only boy at the time, she got her own room, which That's was right. <laughs> not fair. I got to share it with my two other sisters and three cousins. There's just less men than women in my family. The women tend to live a lot longer as well. I am yeah. hoping I end up on that side of the equation. <laughs> Go hormones. Go to fingers, right? <laughs> Speaking of hormones, I'm wearing a t-shirt that says proud to HRT. Mm -hmm. Hormone HR replacement therapy. Exactly. I'm so a nurse. I know all the lingo. But to get back to me, because you know, who doesn't want to talk about me? I do be remember Maya being very caring. She was a very caring brother. I mean, she always cared about us and always watched over us. She just seemed like she beat it to her own drum. I she was. liked techie stuff. She was like the first one to get the Apple computer. I always remember I had to stay out. Like she would kill us if we went in there. All her stuff had to be like organized. Nice, neat. I, I'm OCD. I, she was OCD at the time. You know, just being the perfect student and, and that kind of sense. One that didn't make any problems. That was really, really tiring. I just thought it came naturally for you. I was no. like... My therapist says that I was trying to be the hero child because there was so much stuff going on. <laughs> one sister who got pregnant as a teenager. Mm -hmm. We had one sister who had stability issues, let's just say. Mm -hmm. And you were going out and getting into trouble oh, as yeah. a young kid a lot. I was you just were, mischievous. You were also That's obviously cool. very smart. So I actually felt a lot of kinship to you because of that. Equally. I could yeah. say that equally, yeah. Like, I'm closer to you than any of the other sisters in our family. Not that I'm not close to the other mm -hmm. ones. It's just in a different way. And you've always been loud and brash. And to be honest, mm -hmm. I wanted to be more like you oh. growing up. I don't know if you knew that. Well, I know that now, but I didn't know that growing up. You did a lot of the things I wanted to do. You know, like you what? High school basketball team. No, I don't but... think I was even that good, but I wanted to be good. Our father really loved oh, basketball. Oh, well, yes. I'm sure he was really proud of you. Oh like yeah, that. he was. I mean, we never won a game, but he was very <laughs> I did play varsity since like seventh grade, so at least I had to be somewhat good. You used to foul out a lot, I heard Yeah, that. I was very aggressive. <laughs> there were things that you were able to do because you were girls that I wasn't able to do. Like mm. that is the life I could have had. Like with Marisol, you know, with yeah. like the performing arts things she mm -hmm. was doing. I sang on in the chorus. You didn't pursue that, but you were good. And now I'm a professional singer. Yeah. But so... Marisol was the artist. What was my talent? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you I was a, like the talentless one. <laughs> I would say I will say this. It's 3 a.m. I have a body in the trunk. Help me bury it. And she'd be like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Do this. And I wanted to express all these like creative parts of me that I somehow felt I was not able to do. I wanted to take dance classes. Yeah. Especially in the 80s. You always had the fear of being called gay or something like that. The biggest mistake I made was actually when I graduated college. Immediately moving away and moving in with the person I eventually married. And not that I think marrying her was a mistake because I have a beautiful kid from that marriage. Mm -hmm. If I had like just taken the time to explore who I was and gone to like New York mm -hmm. or something like that and like lived in the city for a while, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of yeah. things would have probably become apparent yeah. to me at that point. What it, was it? Did you always just feel like you were not comfortable in your own body or you always felt like you identified more with women? It's when the sixth grade rolled around and the girls started oh. like developing and they started wearing different kinds of clothes and stuff like that. Yeah, the sixth grade dance at Howell Road. Right. And then I felt like in attraction to like express myself like they were but I only knew that I was a boy and so I wasn't allowed to do that. I kind of had this idea that gee if only I could do that I would be okay. What happened is is that later on in life when I did get the chance to wear those kinds of clothes and stuff like that that wasn't enough because that wasn't me. It wasn't about the clothes or how it, what they were doing it was about who they were. I always thought of it as like a curiosity. Maybe for a little while it would be really cool to look like that and and feel what it would person. be and be that person. But I've thought of that too, but not with men. I've thought of that with yeah. other women. Like, why 
wonder what their life is like. I never so, wanted to be one of the other boys. That's what I'm saying. Like, so around sixth grade is when you started noticing not only were you attracted to women, but you also kind of wanted to experience what it would be like, what to, it be would be them. like to be them. Okay. It's right around puberty. Yeah. And, and I and I really started thinking about it, not in terms of that it meant something about my identity. I thought of it as a boy is not supposed to think those things. It wasn't that I saw, thought to myself, gee, I'm transgender. It was more like, like something's wrong I, or I have something this, like the secret I have that this, nobody like, should know. Yes, I have this desire. That I'm off. And because that's how society that. taught yeah. me. You know, I never like got dressed up and walked gotcha. out. And I never did anything like that. In fact, I didn't do anything like that until I did eventually come out as transgender. Mm -hmm. That happened almost exactly nine years ago. It just so happens that the first person I told was you. Outside of Trish, who was my wife at the we time. We were in London, right? London. We were. It was a really weird situation because it was actually my 15th anniversary trip. I knew she was nervous the whole time. There seemed to be this buzz going on. And the wife, who I'm close to as well, I consider her like one of my sisters. I think she had made a hint to me at some point that Maya was going to tell me something. I just didn't know what it was. I thought, obviously, it's not a divorce because we're here celebrating the 15th anniversary. <laughs> and they seemed to be getting along. I had only come out to her like 10 days before. So I was really scared because I also didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah. You were about to leave. And I was like, I have to tell Yeah, because it was like the last day. So we were we're actually in the lobby of the hotel yeah. and I'm trying to tell you something and I can't say it no. and I'm really having a hard time and then you just were there like, you obviously have something to say. Just say it. Do you remember how I said it? I actually don't really remember. I was actually, I think, anticipating that at the time she was going to tell me she was gay. Oh yeah. Because to be honest with you, I didn't know too much about transgender. I knew that there was always something in her life that was off. I was correct or somewhat correct. Yeah, you were. You were <laughs> right. It's just. I mean, I was just like, <laughs> Like, okay. I think when she told me, I said, okay. I don't remember exactly what I even said response. I mean, I know it was positive. I said, okay. Yeah, yeah. it was. I think I Googled it later because I didn't even, I didn't even know. To be honest with you, I was like, oh, what is that? And there was some early tension too in some of those days. Correct. I spent a lot of time not telling them things. I think I'm a more open person now. De well, definitely. You're yeah. more open. So I guess when you did come out, it was getting to know somebody new and different because it yeah. was somebody new and different. I was able to suddenly express like the full breadth of my personality in a way that I hadn't been able to do before. Later on though, build sisterly bonds that had never really gotten a chance to grow. But I always remember one thing, we were in mom's house and I'm sitting in the living room and you just like come out of the room because you were there for something. You just like had taken off your top entirely and you were just totally naked from the waist up and I had never seen your breasts before. Oh. <laughs> you one of the sisters now. <laughs> you kept walking and I was like, okay, it's that's true. different. And then Marisol too. I want to see if we have big areolas like everybody else in the back. <laughs> Oh, Leave it in Marisol. <laughs> she was actually impressed with my. She was like, "Wow, <laughs> you're one of us." Well, I that. don't. Probably my breast surgery. I don't. Yeah. So when I started my YouTube channel, what did you think? Well, I actually yeah. thought it was pretty cool that you had a YouTube channel. Do you ever watch my videos? I actually don't. I think I've watched one or two, but it, I also <laughs> don't even know where my cell phone is right now. Here's a question I have: The first time you see me in like all women's clothes, mm -hmm. what did you think? I'm trying to remember. When and be was honest, the first I don't care. You're not no, I'm trying feelings. to remember when the first time I really saw you. Yeah. I. I think I remember that I knew that my sister-in-law had helped dress you. <laughs> I think that was a first impression. Yeah. Our style has definitely evolved after that and it's definitely taken on a more less business, just millennial-ish like I guess, right? More yeah. hip, is hip even a cool I'm... word? Yeah. <laughs> Before it would be more of like kind of more businessy or churchy. I went like immediately into like middle-aged woman mode. That yeah. I think also was a time to discover what you like and what you look good into. It takes a while before you kind of develop like who no. am I? What does this person like? I age? always wear clothes younger than my age. You do. My ex roommate tells me that she said you wear everything tight. I think I'm just Latina. You know, like Latinas wear like. She loves the little tight jeans, I mean, the little tight. Pops. I don't like baggy mm. stuff. She's got really nice breasts, so <laughs> why not show them off? My biggest fantasy right now is to get married, but this time. For good. Well, yes. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. This time to be the bride. Unfortunately, need a girlfriend first. If there's any takers out there, I'll filter them all through you. The only people that are very serious. <laughs> Oh, yeah. At what point did you just kind of stop thinking of me with my old name? I can't recall, to be honest with you. I mean, it's been about what, nine years. Definitely the first couple years, it was difficult. But I think after the years started going by, it did become easier and then it just became natural. I've always actually been very touched by the fact you and Marisol, you're always with the pronouns and the names and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And she'll say like, hey sis, and blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it makes it's, me feel good. It's the little things that count. <laughs> and I thank you very much for that. Oh. 
I can't think of a better place to end than on there. And a note of positivity. If any of you are struggling with your families, just know that it is possible to get to a point where they just accept you for who you are. This is true. If you have any additional questions you would like to ask my sister Sylvia, put them in the comments down below and I will get them over to her. As always, my socials are down below. And if you have a dime to spare, please consider giving to my Patreon. And on that note, please like my video by giving it a thumbs up. Please share my video and please subscribe and see you around interwebs.